Hey Blender Bob here, the leaves are starting to change colors here in Canada and I thought I could show you how to make a very dense forest with a lot of beautiful colors. I got these three trees from Turbo Squid and what I want to do now is to scale them all at about the same size. I will select all the leaves and link the material to the last one because I want them all to have the same shader. I will delete that shader because it's too complicated for nothing. I will just create a new one and it's going to be very simple. It doesn't matter where your trees come from. If they come with a shader on the leaves with all the transparency and the textures and all this stuff, you don't need all that stuff. Get rid of it. You just need a flat color because at this distance, you're never going to see it and your renders are going to be much, much faster. Okay, check this out. I will create an object info node and a ramp. So random goes into the factor and color goes into base color. Now we'll change this to HSV and I will go clockwise. The first color I will set it to green and the other one I will set it to red. It's not going in the right direction so I will change it to counterclockwise. That means the colors are going to go from green to red counterclockwise. So if I go on my ramp here I can change the color and decide how much green, red, yellow, orange that I want in the scene. But I can see that some of the leaves on some trees are made of two geometry, two different geometries so I get different colors for the same tree. I don't want that. I will make the trunks invisible and now I'm just going to select all the leaves for one tree and join them together by pressing J. I also made sure that all the trunks have the same shader. I place the trees all back to the origin. Also for every trees I combine the leaves and the trunks together. This way my entire tree is made of one object. And now I select them all and I take them out of their hierarchy. So I just unparent them and keep the transform. Make sure you apply the transformations on all of them. So they're all selected, you go to object and you go to apply all transforms. So all the locations are set to zero, same thing for the rotations and all the scales are set to one. I don't need all that crap, so select delete hierarchy and it's gone. I like to use a simple renaming add-on to rename them all and it's done. So if I take a look at the memory, I got 2.6 million polygons. It's gonna be total hell when I try to instance this into a forest. So here's my solution. For every tree, I'm gonna create a low res version using an icosphere. I will adapt it to the shape of the tree. And for the trunk, I will create a cylinder. Note that I'm still in edit mode, so it's gonna automatically be part of the icosphere. It's not gonna be two different objects. So just a cylinder with three sides, because we don't need more than that, it's a low res version. And I'm gonna make it match the trunk of the tree. So I did the same thing for all of the trees. You wanna make sure that you also apply the transformation on the low res. You can also see that I put them in two different collections, so high and low. By the way, when you make a forest, you don't need more than seven different trees of the same species to avoid repetition. For the ground, I'm going to create a grid. I'm going to change the subdivision to 100. Well, maybe that's a little bit too much. I don't need that much, but anyway, it's too late. Okay, I'll scale it up. And then I will use in edit mode the proportional tool so I can modify the ground. If you roll the mouse wheel, you're going to be able to change the area that's going to be affected by the proportional modification. Put, 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 put. Okay, good enough for the demo. Now I'm going to link my trees in the scene. So inside my tree file, I found the collections and I want to get them both, but you don't want instance collections. You don't want that because if you do this, all the collection will be collapsed together. If you don't do it, you will see all the trees separately like this. The reason why you want to link your trees and not get them in your file is because you want to keep your file size very small. So if you link them, like right now, the trees that I have right now, it's about 440 megs and I only have five trees. So imagine if I had like a different kind of trees in there and uh, to make a very different, you know, dense forest with a lot of different kind of trees, it would become very heavy. So let's say my file is one gigabyte. That means every time I save my file, it's going to save one gigabyte. And if I have auto save on, every time it auto saves, it's going to save one gigabyte. So it's insane. You don't want that. So that's why you want to link everything. And now it's geometry node time. No, 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 don't, don't. Keep, keep watching. It's not going to be that hard. It's going to be very simple. I promise. We could do the same thing with particles, but the particle system is going to be changed completely. So I'm going to go with geo nodes. So I take my ground here. I will just rename it ground and I will create a new script. The first thing I want to do is to distribute points on the faces. So I will create a distribute point on faces node. You can just drag it and it's going to connect automatically. Now we're going to change from random to poisson disk. What this does is it will avoid all the trees to be on top of each other. So it will keep a distance between them. But now it's hard to see what I'm doing because I don't see the ground anymore. So I'm going to create a join geometry node. 
just connect it here and take my original geometry and connect it at the bottom of the node. So now I can mess around with the values and it's much easier to see what I'm doing. Okay, but we don't want points, we want trees. So we're gonna do an instance on point. So that's going to replace all the points by instances of the trees. I'm going to drag the entire low res collection in the scene. And now I connect geometry with instances and I get, boom, a huge forest. Everything is too big. So I'm just gonna change a random here to something smaller. That's too small. So 0 0.01, yeah, okay. But now all the trees are on top of each other. Just click on pick instances and separate children. Ah, now it's working, but they all have the exact same size. So we're gonna put a little bit of randomness in the scale. So I will create a random value node, and then I will set some settings. So we already had 0 0.01 was not too bad. So let's try 0 0.008 maybe, and maximum 0 0.01. And I just need to connect the value to the scale. And now I can tweak the values to the desired result. We can also see that they are all oriented the same way. Look at these three right here. So I'm just gonna create a random value node again, and I'm gonna connect it into the rotation. That affected the X, Y, and Z rotation. We only wanna change the Z rotation. Easy to fix. I'm just gonna create a combined X, Y, Z node and I'm gonna connect it right here in the middle. And you see everything got in place automatically. And I want this not in X, but I want it in Z. And now I can just mess with the values and I will get random rotations on the trees. The value is not really important. And now I'm gonna blow your mind. Well, actually not me, the developers at the foundation because I didn't have anything to do with it. I'm going to create a switch node and I will place it right here. Now I will bring in the other collection, the high res trees, and I will connect the geometry output to the true value for the switch node. So now I can switch between the high res and the low res trees and this is what's gonna be outputted. And to decide which one I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a is viewport node. And I connect it to the switch input. So that means that when you're looking at the viewport, it's gonna look at the true. In this case, it's the high res, which is not what I want. Actually, I want the opposite, but I can just switch them around. So the false will go in the true and the true will go in the false. So now when I'm in the viewport, I'm gonna see the low res geometry because it's true. And if I'm not looking at the viewport, meaning if I do a render, I'm gonna see the false, which is the high res. And here's the result, low res on screen, high res at render time. I want to adjust the shaders, so I'm gonna mute this node, so it's gonna go straight to the high res. Okay, let me adjust the density so I can get more trees. If I want to adjust the shaders, because I think there's not enough orange, too much red, for example, I can go on the shader and I can do a library override. So library, make selected. Then I click on the link here to make it local. And now I can adjust the ramp to get the colors that I'm looking for. I will unmute the switch nodes. I will go back to my low res trees. I really need to use this method because my computer is struggling big time. So this is in real time. I didn't accelerate the clip. So you can see how hard it is to just move around the scene. But if I turn it back on, woohoo, now it's going super fast. There are add-ons that can create low res versions like Lodify, link is in the description, and that will allow you to make lower res version of your geometry. Okay, one last thing, maybe I don't want trees everywhere. I wanna be able to paint where I want them. So I will take here the density and plug it here. Now, if I look at the modifier, you can see this just appeared here for the density, but I want to be able to paint it. So I will click here and I can select an attribute, but the one I want doesn't exist. So to fix that, I'm gonna change mode to weight paint and I'm gonna start painting. Now the attribute has been created automatically. You just go on group and you can see I got trees here and I can paint wherever I want. And you can reduce the strength if you don't want as much density. And now I have a beautiful forest. So that's it. And Friday, I'm gonna to fly to Europe and I'm gonna to tour Europe a little bit. Then I'm gonna to go to Amsterdam for Beacon 2022, where I'm gonna give my talk about the pipeline that we use at Real by Fake. All right, bye.